So Jen B on one of my prior YouTube clips asked, could you please do a question involving capillary fluid exchange, hydrostatic pressure, oncotic pressures? Sure, why don't we do that? So if you, if any of you guys are new to my channel, I appreciate you coming by. Just uh, please subscribe and like this video. So this question is going to provide you value because these variables are slightly unusual, okay? Slightly challenging. However, they're assessed on the NBME for step one, okay? So we have the 64-year-old dude with diabetes. That's our risk factor. Uh, causes atherosclerosis for our obvious myocardial infarction here, uh, anterior leads, ST elevations. I jacked this image off of Wikipedia. I literally Googled wiki pulmonary edema. Okay, so this is showing us bilateral alveolar infiltrates. So when we look at our variables for up and down arrows, just real fucking quick, the difference between hydrostatic and oncotic, because I know there's a percentage of you who want that that uh, description right now. Hydrostatic is a fluid pressure, okay? So the more fluid you have within a vessel, it's going to be exerting a pressure against the vascular wall. So the greater hydrostatic pressure, the greater propensity for fluid to leave the vessel, okay? In contrast, Oncotic pressure is due to solutes, mainly proteins. It's a retention force. It's a retention pressure. The greater your oncotic pressure, the lesser propensity for fluid to leave the vessel. Okay? So if we have states of low protein, such as hepatic insufficiency, where you're not making albumin or nephrotic syndrome, you'll have low oncotic pressure. More fluid will leave the vessels. If you have heart failure, peripheral edema or pulmonary edema, you get a backup, increased hydrostatic pressure, fluid leaves the vessels, okay? We can do a long discussion on that type of stuff, but I just want to stay convergent on this question. So we have an MI, and we look at the pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure, it's going to be an up arrow. Left ventricular dysfunction is going to cause increased afterload on the left atrium. LA pressure equals pulmonary capillary wedge pressure so that back up into the pulmonary venules and capillaries leads to a resultant transidation into the alveolar spaces. So we have an up arrow for uh, pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure, not hard, okay? But these latter variables of alveolar interstitial hydrostatic and oncotic pressure, slightly unusual, all right? But when we reason through it, it's not overly crazy. If we have transidation of fluid into the alveolar spaces, then we say, by definition, wouldn't that therefore mean we've got increased interstitial hydrostatic pressure as well? There's fluid in the alveolar spaces. And we just said hydrostatic pressure is a fluid pressure. So we secondarily would have to have increased alveolar interstitial hydrostatic pressure. It's not the uh, the primary result of RMI, the primary result is the increased pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure. But then secondarily, we will get increased alveolar interstitial hydrostatic pressure following that transidation into the alveolar spaces, okay? And then because it's a transidate, which means it's relatively depleted of cells and protein, it's not due to an inflammatory process such as in the setting of ARDS or uh, an infection, because that fluid is relatively depleted of solutes, the oncotic pressure of that alveolar interstitial fluid is going to be fairly low. So we look at our variables here, increased uh, pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure, increased alveolar interstitial hydrostatic pressure, decreased alveolar interstitial oncotic pressure, okay? That's our combination. And once I, uh, I just described it, it's not overly crazy, but when you first look at this question, uh, slightly unusual, okay? So there's a lot we can talk about on this front. I know you don't want to see 17-minute clips. I'll obviously make more questions, all right? So you know the deal. Uh, if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.